Welcome to Silicon Valley Nonprofits, a service of KMVT Community Media. My name is Bev Lanahan, and I'm your host. Today, our guest is Liesl Mendoza. She's founder, president, and CEO of the Mentoring Club, an international group. Thanks so much for coming today, Liesl. It's nice to have you. Thank you for having me, Bev. It's nice to see you again. Well, I must say, when I heard about the Mentoring Club, I wondered. I know a lot about mentoring clubs. I've been in a lot of them. I've done a lot of them. So I was very curious. How is the Mentoring Club different from maybe other mentoring clubs that have been in existence for a while? Yeah, that's the, that's a very fair question, Bev, because I was researching mentoring clubs or mentoring organizations myself before I established the mentoring club. But for the audience to decide whether this is the mentoring club for them and if it's now is the time to join us, it's probably best to share with them the story. And it's really my story. In late 2013, um, I felt this strong compulsion in my gut that I want to give back when I turned 50, which was in 2016. I had to discern what that give back might be because I feel like I've been so blessed with so much and I would like to share that success and happiness with others. So in that discernment process, I ended up looking at how can I help the community that I so love, which is the business community and consulting, and there are a lot of young professionals that are coming out yeah. from schools or from other experiences. And so I heard an internal clamor within myself to just... It's <laughs> a beautiful image. <laughs> yeah, just to go ahead and continue be, being a mentor, even though I'm a manager um, and I've been a manager since 24 years old, I still enjoy that opportunity to share my knowledge, my expertise um, to the young people, whether it's technical, it's business. And then when I see them grow and develop mm -hmm. themselves, very, it's so elating. Very so, rewarding. Yes, yes, yes mm -hmm. definitely. And so that's, that was the internal drive. And then the external one was that being in business development, mm -hmm. I network around. And Smart. in my, <laughs> I have to, <laughs> and in my experience during the open forum, young professionals will ask, how do I find a mentor? Uh -huh. Is my manager my mentor? And how do I approach somebody to become my mentor? Hmm. So I just felt their pain of the awkwardness of being in that situation where you know you need guidance, but you, you just can't ask for it. And also, you know, I empathized with their situation of wanting to get faster to where they want to be in terms of their goals. Mm. So, so that's, it, it, so in my mind, it was so clear, also in my heart, it was so clear why I established the mentoring club. Uh, that makes sense. And I think sometimes we think that the younger generation's got it all figured out and they, they know about all this stuff and they don't have any need for a mentor, but uh, looks are deceiving, right? <laughs> yes, yes, and definitely as part of the way that I have been asking people to look at the mentoring club, one of the things that I espouse uh, with this young generation, because I know they're getting a bad rap on media that they feel like they're privileged. We're talking about the millennials and the Gen Z, but I have not encountered anyone like that people who have been approaching the mentoring club. They're passionate, they're driven, and they really just want to be able to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's our responsibility to guide them. And part of it is sharing our leadership core values. Yes. And if I may share with you, um, one of the challenges, question, challenge questions that one of the mentors asked me at the start of the mentoring club is, okay, so you're asking people to support you, whether they're mentees, mentors, donors, um, sponsors, or partners, right? So what do you stand for? This goes back to your question of why me, why now? I had to think about it and it just flowed very smoothly. I identified three key values, which we boldly put on our website as well. We said, okay, if you have um, these eight values, you will find success and happiness. And these are integrity, honesty, commitment, vision, execution, humanity, contentment, and family, right? Mm. So 
That's so, been true for a long time, ex except a lot of people haven't really stopped to think about that. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. So you, um, one of the things I know you do when you interview people is look for this alignment of, of values, and, um, mm -hmm. and then that helps you look for a match. Well, you have a global platform. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting to me because, um, of course, we're communicating globally very easily now, setting up a mentoring environment in this kind of uh, technology environment mm -hmm. uh, globally. Tell us how you do that. Yes, um, so since my background is in information systems development, <laughs> I'm leveraging those decades of experience into developing a platform approach to mentoring. My goal and my vision is that anyone anywhere in the world who is looking for guidance from mentors can go into the Mentoring Club platform and they can be matched with mentors who can help them develop the skills that they need to achieve their career and life goals. So what happens is we look for mentors that are already accomplished leaders and in terms of qualifications or pr they're very practical. I'm looking for somebody with the same heart that I have in terms of giving back. But at the same time, I'm looking for mentors that have high self-esteem and they're happy and successful because those are key attributes that mentees would sense. Um, sure. It contributes to the believability factor of the mentor. They have to be in a good place for the mentees to be comfortable with them. And then for the mentees, um, again, it's global platform. The way that we pre-qualify serious mentees is that we ask them to subscribe, and this is following the principle of skin in the game. If mm -hmm. it's free, people take it for granted, but if they're invested in themselves, then they would be more serious, and the interactions between the mentors and mentees would be better. So. From a subscription basis, I know some viewers may be interested how much, right? So it's actually $39 or less a month. Um, and the mentees can actually access the mentors to develop various skills that they need to reach their goals. So they so. mutually agree on what those goals are. And, yes. And then set yes. about um, yes. working back and forth. Do they work um, the way it works best for them, whether it's uh, email, texting? How does that work? So with technologies right now, they can choose. They can, so part of the relationship is an agreement of how they would interact. There is a development plan. What are the goals? What are the skills that we're going to develop? And how are we going to interact with each other? Good. And part of that is um, I will give you all the information that I'm happy to interface with you on. So whether it's a Zoom meeting or a Skype uh, or um, since it's global, it, they could be in different geographies um, and phone numbers, uh, emails, right? So if you're comfortable with WeChat, WhatsApp, Viber, whatever that is, we're leveraging all the technology um, available that they are comfortable with. Oh, good. And I imagine sometimes they're open to new ones that, that they don't know about that would make the whole experience uh, better for both. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, oh, yes. That's great. Well, I, I want to also ask you um, a couple of other questions. So it uh, seems to me like with the heart that you have for this and the head, you're sort of like a yenta in the mentoring world, you know, <laughs> this matchmaker. Um, and, and I often wonder how a program like this can be sub sustainable because you're only one person and as good as you are, as your whole platform grows, you're gonna have more people to keep uh, identifying and uh, matching up. How, mm -hmm. how are you gonna do that? Yeah, so growth is always a concern and scalability has yeah. always been in my head when I started this program or project, passion project. Um, and so again, using my business mind and also, as you said, the heart into it, there, I think there's two ways. It will organically grow because of the model that we have put together. And then there's the business discipline that I put into it. So let's talk about the organic first. So in, when I say organic, it's because of the give back spirit. The uh -huh. mentors are giving back. Once the mentees have developed themselves and have achieved that meaningful work so that they can make a positive impact in the world, 
we, my hope is that they themselves will realize to pay it forward so that they can help with the journey of other mentees or, or young professionals that are coming up um, and the cycle continues. So it is that culture of giving back from an orga organic standpoint that I'm hoping we could make that discipline sustainable. So Especially with, I think, the um, technology working in your favor, I think. Uh, the two together are going to make a difference. I can remember having uh, being a part of a woman's group early on, supporting mm -hmm. one another. And it was that group of women who encouraged us in leadership positions when we were just new into supervising people mm -hmm. or whatever it might be. And that was before technology was really very prevalent. Mm -hmm. And um, I can look back today and say some of my key leadership skills came from that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what am I doing? I'm paying it forward. And I think it is something that just naturally happens, but uh, you'll have technology on your side. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and it really, it all boils down, you have a very good example right there. There wasn't a lot of technology, but it's the will and determination and the passion of the people involved in the project that made it successful. Yes. So, so that's the organic part that I'm looking into. And then on the business side, it's really more about the revenue generation model. So we are a nonprofit for 501c3. And so we still are going to be calling on people, soliciting donations. But at the same time, the subscription model for the mentees will help. And eventually, when the platform is mature enough, I would like to be able to offer it to organizations, companies, whether it's alumni associations or other nonprofits ah, who good. can use it as a mentoring platform. Very good. Very good. Well, give, a, give our viewers an example of um, a successful model, a, a mentor and a mentee, and how, how is that working? Yes, I'm very happy to do that, and I'm very proud of his success. So he is, his name is, is Nigel Lay. He actually did an interview session. When I was listening to him, it was just so eye-opening for me to hear his story. He's a first-generation college graduate, and he's the only one in the family. Mm -hmm. The family came to the United States as Vietnamese refugees. So when he heard about, he, he believes in mentoring because he has experienced it in his youth with his violin teacher. Oh, and oh, yeah, that's wonderful, right? Yes. Um, and then he heard about the mentoring club from his manager, who is my friend. Mm. And he immediately embraced the opportunity to be part of the a trial mentor mentee program that we set up in 2017. So he's one of our founding mentees. So when he worked with the mentor, um, his name is Gabriel Leva. They actually worked on his interpersonal relationship skills. He realized the value of developing qualitative relationships with his coworkers. When before he would just go to work, you know, <laughs> you know be in his cube. <laughs> yeah, as, as, as he's a developer, so be in his yep. cube and then go home. Mm -hmm. So he heeded Gabrielle's advice that you should make those uh, relationships be seen, be heard, collaborate. And when he started doing that, he gained more confidence. So from being a developer, now he is, um, he, he went on to become a customer customer service analyst and now is a data analyst and he's working on his project management and program management skills. So I'm very happy with that. Wonderful. And it, it works, as you say, organically. That's uh, terrific to hear. Well, I know people will want to get a hold of you to learn more, whether they would like to be a mentor or a mentee. So how mm -hmm. can people reach you, Lisa? Yeah, so please, uh, my you can email me directly. My email is Liesel, so it's L-I-E-S-E-L at thementoringclub.org. Or you can follow us on our various social media channels. And we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Oh, boy. Okay, well, thank you so much for being with us, Liesel. And I hope things go well for your mentoring club. Thank you so much, too, Bev. Thank you. Thanks for having me.